It's a romantic story. They met at a ball at Versailles in 1930. She was Dominique Schlumberger. Her uncle and father uh, invented Schlumberger oil fill technologies. They lived in Paris. Uh, they met and married. World War II broke out and they fled Nazi-occupied Europe after working in the resistance. Came to Houston, which was already, by the mid-40s, was already a petroleum center, with two children and had three other children once they were here. The Menils asked the artist Mary Callery uh, whom they should hire as an architect, and she recommended Philip Johnson. Johnson was particularly known for building his own uh, weekend house called the Glass House outside New York, uh, which had walls completely of glass. The house was designed and built between 1948 and 1951. It is a house that's sort of set far back from the street, so it was screened from the street. This is a one-story flat-roofed house. It's organized around an interior courtyard that the living room opens into. It was very, very different from all the houses around it, not only uh, because it was a modern house, but also because it was a fairly modest house. It was the first opportunity that many Houstonians had to experience a modern house, but especially a house with glass walls. And I heard one story from the, the widow of an elderly architect uh, who came here for a, a morning tea, and she remembered just being stunned by the amount of, of sunlight that poured into the house. Philip Johnson was just starting his career when he designed the Menil House. In the 1970s, Philip Johnson's career took off, uh, particularly because of his association with the Houston developer Gerald Hines. Johnson ended up doing work uh, throughout the United States for Hines as well as for, for other developers. I am sure they found it a somewhat challenging uh, and fascinating frontier. And they enriched it tremendously. They brought their new ideas uh, in art, architecture, in ways of thinking, human rights. They, um, someone has said that they administered the shock of the new to this part of the world. The art collecting started soon after they married with her portrait by the great surrealist Max Ernst, who was of course unknown at the time and uh, needing commissions at the time. Her portrait was done, it's a very unusual portrait, as it would be by Max Ernst, and she did not like it. Uh, years later, uh, after returning to Europe after the war, uh, she found where she had put this portrait behind a closet and realized what a great, great painting it was, what an unusually brilliant portrait of her it was. John also bought a Cezanne watercolor in New York City in 1945, I believe, paid $100 for it, brought it back to Houston in a briefcase and they made great friendships with artists, living artists, Rene Magritte, Andy Warhol, Robert Rauschenberg, Jasper Johns. Uh, they collected artists in depth and they really got to know them personally. And of course, the collection soon outgrew this really rather modest house. John de Menil died in 1973. And Mrs. de Menil then had to decide what she was going to do with the art collection that she and her husband had amassed. She finally decided that she would build a museum in Houston. She interviewed a number of architects uh, before uh, meeting the Italian architect Renzo Piano. She and Renzo Piano hit it off. They were both very serious people, very disciplined, uh, very rational. Uh, Mrs. Demenil was extremely focused and very intent on sort of solving the practical problems of designing an art museum. And when uh, Renzo Piano talked about uh, the building that he designed for the Menil collection, the art museum, he really uh, focused his uh, uh, discussion of, of, of his design on his resolution of those practical problems. The Menil Collection is Renzo Piano's first building in the United States. When Mrs. de Menil opened the museum in 1987, her words were, Houston, this is your museum. And while that's true, it is so much about its neighborhood. It is tucked away in a leafy residential neighborhood. Very local, but it is also a global phenomenon. It's a very eclectic collection. It's about making connections between the ancient, the modern, the Western, and the non-Western. It's intriguing to see how much the Menil Collection Art Museum uh, paraphrases the architecture of Mrs. de Menil's house. Uh, it's sort of low-slung, flat-roofed, uh, it has the interior courtyards with the subtropical vegetation, uh, the dark floors, so it, in a way Renzo Piano sort of paid tribute 
to the Menil House in his design of the art museum. And entering it today is really rather like entering someone's home. And I think that would please her that people felt that they were entering a home, their home for art.